If um, something was yeah. attacked and then NH4 plus is a resultant, then, then does that mean that it's on the C terminus or it can be also in the middle, right? If it was I asparaging. If it was asparaging. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think she's saying, like, will you get NH? Yeah, you do. If you cleave, okay. Hydrazine cleaves any amide bond, right? So if your side chain has an amide bond and it cleaves it, you'll get NH4 plus as well. That seems right. So why don't we get NH4 here? Let's see. That's a good point. Yeah, that's, what we, that's uh, something I don't understand. It seems like in part B, yeah. ammonium should be one of the products, or ammonia right. should be one of the products. That would be a good question to ask him. I don't see why he wouldn't list the ammonia as a product here, because it seems like uh, it should be getting produced there. I, I don't understand. This is the that. question I really had. So here, when we had notes last lecture, when you, um, we, we said that NH4 plus can come from this, this, or it can come from an anode on the carboxy end. Being hydrolyzed. Being being hydrolyzed. All of these were hydrolysis. Hydrolysis of this, hydrolysis of this, or hydrolysis of this. We weren't talking specifically about hydrazine. But if we get this, that doesn't necessarily mean it's on the C terminus, right? No, because this is coming from the side chain. Right, okay. Okay, anyways, I guess we should just move on to the side just get confused. So yeah, there is something I don't understand. I don't understand why the hydrazine didn't give us a ammonium product in part B. All right, but in any case, it should be definitely clear, just because the aspartic acid didn't get attacked by hydrazine on the side chain doesn't mean that it was the C-terminus. It's only if its carboxy carbon doesn't get attacked that it's the C-terminus. So. Where would an H4 plus come from if we were doing this problem? The back, oh, the bottom? Okay. Well, if this is the C-terminus, it should come from here. I see. So it, it really seems like there should be an NH3. Yeah. I don't know why we didn't get one. Okay. okay. So, So based on what we already did in part A and B, we know the C terminus is amidated, and this is the notation for showing that. What that means is that the C terminus looks like this. The C terminus doesn't actually look like a carboxy group. It looks like an amide group. But we don't know yet what it's not side chain this is. The, yeah, the we haven't been able to decide which, which amino acid energy. this is. Yeah. That's right. But we do know that whatever is here, it has an NH2. Right. Now, what's the diacetyl chloride point supposed to tell us? The N-terminus. That's or right. Or if it's lysine. That's right. So we now know that the N-terminus is B. That's right. Both the phenylalanine and the lysine got labeled with the diacetyl chloride, but in the lysine, only the side chain got labeled by the diacetyl chloride. So we know that was not the N-terminus. But the, the N-terminus side of the phenylalanine got labeled with the diacetyl chloride. We know that's the sign that that is the N-terminus. So now we've figured out another clue that that is diacetyl chloride. I'm sorry, that that is the N-terminus. Right, the lysine still did, but it's just the side chain, right? Right. Okay. If, if this nitrogen had also had a diacetyl chloride, then that would indicate that the lysine was at the N-terminus. But no, it's not this one, one or the this other. one. Great. Right. It wouldn't be both of them. All right, and now we figured out. So what did we know at the end of part B? At the end of part B, all we knew was that the C terminus was amidated. And what do we know at the end of part C? We know one more thing. We know the first amino acid is phenylalanine. And that says
I think I'm going to do is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These, this is what we got from part A. These were the amino acids in part A. So I'm going to cross out the phi here, because I already know exactly where that goes. And I'm going to cross out the ammonium, because I know where that came from. So these are the pieces that we still have to place. It's good to, again, treat this like a jigsaw puzzle. So what have we deduced here? So I guess if chemotypsin or whatever, if it, if it cuts the, we know it cuts phenyl, and we have a phenyl, so we know we'll have a, a thing there. So that's going to be our phenyl that's. In fact, we know exactly where it cleaved that. It cleaved it here. Right. Because we know where the phenylalanine came from. And we know we'll cleave a tert, right? Because we have right. a tert. Right. So how does that help us? We know that the four have to go together, right? That's true. That B negative four. Right. So, so four down from C should be where tire is. One, two, three, four here. And we know it wouldn't be the four from the right because NH four plus with ili and val should be on the right, right? One thing we know is this must be the rightmost. There's a couple different ways to know that, but because this has ammonium, we know this must have come from over here where the ammonium comes from. This is coming from this amidated carboxy side. But the other way you know that is, uh, again, we're going to cleave on the carboxy side of the tyrosine. Well, then the tyrosine has to be in the middle, not on the far side. So there's a couple of different ways to see that this is peptide B and this is peptide A. So this actually helps us a lot. We know this was peptide B and this was peptide A. Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, before we do anything more then, we need to build our information into our table we know that these three are asp, lis, and lis. We just don't know what order. And we know that these two are isoleucine and valine. We just don't know what order. We have to keep building as much information as we can into our overall ideas. We know for sure now where the tyrosine goes, but we have a lot of information about these as well. Okay. The tyrosine won't be part of, oh, okay, oh, that's what you were saying. It wouldn't be part of these, right? That's why it has to be on the left. Okay, sorry, we'll keep going. I'm sorry. the problem should be pretty easy. Mm. Alright, so what can we deduce from E? So lice gets cleaved on the carboxy side. Probably next to Now e. before you even oh uh, what's our a uh, our cleaver here is the thermolysin? And that's 